Hi YouTube friends, this is Brad Silver Lining Daydream. Today's video is on taping cement board joints. Let's get right into this. All right, so this is two inch non-alkali mesh tape. It's made specifically for cement boards and it's adhesive on the one side, so we're just gonna put that on. You wanna make sure all your cement board joints have cement board tape on them. It doesn't matter if some of the cement board tape overlaps. Taping these helps to keep your cement board from cracking and ultimately your tiles from cracking. You want to overlap the cement board tape with half on one side of the joint and the other half of the tape on the other side of the joint. Just kind of making sure that it's in there good. You can cut it with your drywall knife or with a utility blade, it doesn't matter. The brand of cement board tape that I'm using is Adverse 2 inch fiber tape. So this thin set's been sitting here 10 minutes. I want to show you the consistency that I'm using. So it's a little bit thicker maybe than what you would normally use. So you just want to put a thin coat on here. The idea is that this is going to give this structure. And also it's going to give it um, a smooth, consistent surface to put your waterproofing membrane on. Now it's not the prettiest and I don't really care. I'm going to go back and smooth it out. So you want to get it in the joint, in the mesh. I don't care how pretty it looks, I just care about getting it in, and then we'll clean it up in a little bit. I definitely would recommend purchasing one of these corner trowels. It works very well. To reinforce the joints, Permabase recommends using their 2 inch Permabase mesh tape. It's non-alkali. I can't find it anywhere. Permabase actually recommends using the flat side of your trowel to spread the thinset mortar across the area where the joints meet. The mortar should pre-fill the areas between the joints. Then again using your trowel, embed the 2 inch alkali resistant mesh tape into the mortar and smooth it out. I'm trying to get it in the joint. The videos that I've seen, they always use the mesh tape that has the adhesive on one side and since that's all I could find, that's what I decided to use. So for peace of mind, I'm really trying to stuff the mortar into the joint behind the adhesive tape. Because the cement board is slightly thinner than the drywall, I'm using more thin set than what you would normally use to tape the joints where the drywall meets the cement board. This is so that I have more thin set to better feather the joint together. I'm using a cement board joint tape over any screw holes where I sunk the screw into the cement board deeper than intended just to have peace of mind. So I just mixed up some thin set. It's been sitting about 10 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and start applying it. So you can see that it's a little bit thicker consistency. And so um, I'm going to put another coat on these top joints I think. So I'm going to do a little feathering of this mortar here at the top just kind of come down a little bit so across here and then I'm also going to do that here and here and then down here as well so just a little bit of feathering reinforce these corners a little bit where I could have put a little bit more mortar this is like the perfect consistency maybe slightly thinner but that's okay because I'm doing a little bit of feathering as you can see a couple holes up there so the tile is going to come up to about here so I want to fill those a little bit and we'll get a little bit in this corner here so I could have floated this wall a little bit and uh, they have videos on how to float a wall whoops but we're not going to go into that today we're going to kind of just keep this simple and then also in here I need to feather this in a little bit As long as you're in the joint good, you can have some of that fiberglass tape showing, I think, but because I'm already kind of feathering this in and reinforcing it, I'm just kind of going over it and filling it in. So again, you wouldn't normally use all this, but I'm feathering it back because the drywall sticks out more. Because behind the cement board here, I put a piece of wood and I blocked it in. You can see it on one of my earlier videos. 
Because of the copper piping, a two by four wouldn't fit. So this is kind of narrow. It's like, I think a half an inch, but it gives it some support. Because I have a lot of screws going around here because that's where it failed before. So for that reason, I put some tape there and uh, I'm just covered up those screws with a couple coats of mortar. Here's something I could have done better. So everything on this wall, solid. And that's what you want. You want your substrate to be really tight. You don't want any sponginess anywhere. And uh, I got just a little bit right here. And I wish I would have added a scab in here, some more wood. So I think that's where like those hardy backer boards and some of those other boards are harder than this old permabase cement board. But the permabase cement board is easier to cut, quicker to cut. So I think if you're a good tiler, and I don't do this for a living, but if you're a good tiler, I don't think it's gonna matter if it's cement board or what that backing is, if you support it correctly. Alright, do you think this will do anything or is this a waste of time? I got the mortar, I got the tape, I might as well put it there and see what happens, see if it reinforces that sponginess. So I think we're good now, we're going to let this dry and cure for 24 hours before we apply the Red Guard. Thanks for watching this video and uh, leave a comment below. Um, I don't do this for a living, I don't claim to have everything, I've watched a lot of videos. And out of all the professions, I think tiling is one of the professions where you can't get people to agree on a lot of anything. So they all have their own way of doing it. I'm just trying to follow what makes sense for my application.